And I also was checking out Luca Dia. Luca Dia has been one of my favorite go-to club videographers, documentarians on the scene. Um, definitely somebody that I kind of seeked out when I was first getting involved in stuff because my initial education or my initial experience when it came to club culture mostly came through reading articles and checking out random videos on YouTube and digging through forums and stuff because I was so far away from it. I was like living in the depths of East London somewhere, my parents' home, very much in the hood, very much not a part of all this shit that you would maybe deem to be quote unquote white people stuff so i had to kind of dig through all this stuff and find it out and do my educations via the interwebs and luckily so luckily there was so much cool information on the interwebs that i could kind of devour and kind of get through and one of the amazing things i loved back in the day to check out were these video channels where essentially the the person behind it had the opportunity to kind of fly around the world and video and record the sets of some of the most prominent djs of the scene at the time and this was back when you know dance music's prominent sort of like genre was like minimal and a lot of the biggest guys out there were people like we've got here on the screen like Luciano and Ricardo Villalobos these were some of the biggest names out there there were other names also you can mention the Seth Chocolas the Jamie Joneses um many many more that i can mention that kind of you know basically kind of made that sound their own the magnas and whatnot and it was really cool to kind of see um this whole entire world that i kind of was not aware of and to kind of have a first-hand experience of it through these like really amazing kind of handy cam videos that these channels were making and one of the prominent ones being luca dia and one of the great things about it is that it kind of gave you an idea on what these parties were like. It kind of gave you an idea on what these users were playing. But it also, I feel like, inadvertently served as a good platform to promote and publicize kind of I wouldn't say lesser known, but very region specific events. Some, you know, stuff like Sunways Festival in Romania. The first time I ever kind of saw it and understood what it was all about were the videos I checked out through Luca Dia's channel and, you know, many other things. So I'm sure they played a vital role in really heightening and kind of broadening the profile of festivals such as the one I'm featuring here, which is called um, Caprice Festival out there in Switzerland. Because unless you're kind of really tapped in or you're from there, it's really hard to kind of figure out you know what these things are where they are when they're taking place because there's so many things happening all at the same time but it's just cool to also see to also see people like luciano and ricardo villalobos still going because these are people that i kind of grew up listening to and to see that their sound has now become cool again they're kind of basically doing the same thing they were doing 10 20 plus years ago and at one point it was kind of tired it was kind of you know boring people were kind of over it hence why you know i think the sound completely shifted and went the other end and now you're having people essentially saying 130 bpm is too slow everything has to be like 150 bpm and faster and i feel like the kids reaction is kind of makes sense they're kind of rebelling against this kind of slow drudgy old man minimal type of sound but it's also cool to see that this kind of come back in vogue and this kind of really slow um you know almost hypnotic version of house that you can maybe you know credit to innervision doing a good job in promoting that sound and you could credit maybe again to these guys just continually pushing it you got younger guys like christian ab doing good stuff in terms of you know making that sound relevant again but there's nothing like seeing the old masters doing what they do best and one of the other things i kind of want to mention before i play the clip is that it's also good to see an event like this where there's a real range of people in the crowd it's not just all oldies i think that's what made me fall in love with going out club culture and dance music in general you got a chance to kind of lose yourself in the night you got a chance to escape all your daily worries and struggles and pains and stuff and you also got a chance to meet all sorts of different people it was essentially a way it was essentially like a version of like going to like college or university where if you didn't go you got your education on the dance floor you got to make people of all sort of denominations all races colors and creeds all socioeconomic levels and you all kind of shared this one uniting thing that you were there for the vibes there for a good time there for the music there for the dj you did have a dance whatever it may be and 
it's just nice to see this reflected in the audiences that still follow these guys it's not the same old you know spotty young kids um with the flipping harnesses on and the pvc trousers and the leather belts and stuff it's the same old boring thing it's nice to just see a little bit of a range a little bit more of a you know a little bit more variety in the crowd don't get me wrong it's a very cool occasion of it being in switzerland that's cool but i just like the age ranges is really different so let's play a quick clip here featuring luciano back to back of ricardo Villa lobos at the caprici festival in switzerland Actually, let's fast forward a little bit, see a bit of Ricardo, because this legitimately might be some of the best of Ricardo I've seen. And I recently saw Ricardo play at Fabric, and it was very, very underwhelming. But this might have been one of the best appearances I've seen of Ricardo, especially, um, you know, recorded playing a set in a very, very long time. He seemed to be in real top form here. Fast forward a bit more here, yeah, fast forward a bit more. Oh, let's fast forward a bit more here, yeah, fast forward there. Yeah. Let's just go here. Let's see, let's see if I can get there. That, that shot. Yeah, this shot with actually the guys in the back drinking the shots is amazing. Throughout the entire clip, throughout the entire clip, throughout the entire clip of this, you know, place, the one thing that you kind of remind me a little bit of is this, which is really funny. I think as well, these guys were f are responsible, are responsible for creating this kind of like culture of like VIP behind the DJ booth, which is really bizarre because for me, I always kind of viewed clubs and nightlife as a form of escape from your regular nine to five doldrums or whatever you're going through and very rarely did i give a fuck about standing next to the dj that was playing out it was mostly about being on the dance floor and dancing and actually enjoying the music and getting to meet all different people on the actual dance floor but over time um for whatever reason becoming getting as close as you could to the dj not in the front but behind the booth became another part of currency another part of the culture another part of the lifestyle could you get a guest list spot um could you then get a spot that allowed you to go behind the booth could you get a spot that allowed you to get in front of the booth to the side of the booth could you get the hug behind the decks all this weird nonsense stupid stuff that doesn't really equate a fun night out kind of got ingrained in it and then it kind of changed the overall vibe of the place because then people that were on the dance floor were looking at these guys behind the booth thinking oh i want to be them and not actually enjoying being on the dance floor dancing and listening to the person playing and whatever maybe and vibe into the tunes it kind of created this whole weird ecosystem and vibe around it and i kind of got reminded of this now because at this event luca d is kind of filming from the back right he's filming uh behind the djs in you know behind the dj booth but you can tell from the amount of people that are crossing in front of the cameras the amount of just uh, jostling around that the entire place behind luca dia the actual videographer is absolutely full of hangers on who are all trying to jostle and you know and get the attention of luciana ricardo villalobos playing so this is maybe the worst thing to happen from the minimal scene was this entire culture of hangers on turning the dj booth or the stage into a weird quasi vip type of space it's really lame i fucking hate it i've never really been somebody that kind of gives a crap about getting guest lists the only time where i've what you know bothered about that type of stuff is when you're going to a really expensive club and you just want to not pay entry because the drink prices are already crazy so you're thinking fuck i'm gonna pay 30 euros to get in it's 10 euros for a drink that's already 50 euros for two drinks and an entry you're already looking at a 100 euro night before you've done anything else so if you can get somebody to give you a free entry to get in somewhere it's great 
but you don't care about being in the DJ booth. You don't care about going to groom. You just want to be able to get in for free. But nowadays, people want to get in for free. They want to be able to steal the drinks because that's what some people do as well. The flipping scavy, um, broke, you know, hurting energy. They go behind the booth and they fucking steal the drinks from the DJ's rider. They pour themselves drinks, very heavy pours, take the piss out of that, and then they just stand around on their phone behind the DJ booth looking cool so that they can make people on the dance floor feel inadequate because they're not there. It's really lame. But anyway, let's just continue. Um, let me fast forward a bit here. <laughs> Also a bit of Lucian. Yes, a bit of Ricardo here. Hugging. I put one leg on the ceiling and one near the closet door. One more, skip, skip forward again here. But yeah, but look at the amount of people behind the booth. Just look at that. Look at the hordes of individuals here. None of these people need to be there. None of them whatsoever. And this is one of the reasons why I'm, you know, I kind of go on and on about flipping clubbing in places like Berlin, why it's such a good time. Because essentially that whole door selecting thing and the whole, you know, making sure that only a certain person or a certain type of clientele is allowed into your flipping space, it can be really annoying, especially if you get denied. I've been denied a few times there. It can be really annoying. You can take it really personally. But what it does is that it creates a room or a vibe or an atmosphere of people where you're all on the same level. There's no flipping hierarchy unless you get a guest spot. And again, sometimes guest spot don't even guarantee you entry. But in these type of spaces where you're all paying the same ticket prices, having people behind the booth, swigging on the free beers and the free booze, um, you know, hugging the DJs and just acting self-important or just acting like they're actually part of the fucking performance. It just creates a weird vibe. It's a little bit of an us v them type of performance type thing going on there, which I've never liked. I feel like whenever I have my own space and I have my own club, one of the things that I would be completely strict about would be the fact that there's no hangers on behind the booth. If you want to be, if you hang her on, be to the side of the stage or whatever it may be, but no hangers on behind the booth. It should always be the people actually performing. Let them concentrate, let them have the space to do what they need. You don't need to have all these people behind there. But anyway, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good little set there to check out. If you haven't seen it, please do. Look at Dia, one of my favorite channels out there on YouTube for documenting the scene and keeping all of us, myself included, and these other club rats around the world entertained and informed when it comes to clubbing news and seeing who's about who's playing you gotta love it you gotta love it 